y'all hey welcome back to my channel so today's video I'm going to review the carnival Mardi Gras if you've not watched my series on our cruise of the Mardi Gras please go back and watch it I do have a um, playlist that's made with all my videos on the Mardi Gras first thing I would like to say before I even start this video Carnival messed up again. If anybody watched my video from the sunrise in sep last September, you know that the carnival messed up because they were supposed to deliver, uh, they were supposed to decorate my room for my birthday from um, my friends who gifted that to me. This time, they uh, messed up my friend Claudette from Rolling with the Rallies. Y'all go follow her. She is a um, traveler, she goes on trips. She does single solo trips. She does trips with her family. She's even done cruises. Anyway, my good friend sent me $25 in cruise cash. And guess what? I didn't even know it. I saw the $25 in my account and it said something different besides all of the already onboard credit that I had. So I had all this onboard credit because if you like me, I'm calling Carnival every week until I go to see if my cruise has went down so that I can get, because if you fully pay on your trip, you can get your money back in onboard credit. So if your cruise go down $100, they're going to give you onboard credit of $100. Heck, if it go down $5, they're going to give you onboard credit of $5, but they're not going to give it to you unless you call in to get it. So I had all this other onboard credit that I already had and I wasn't totally sure exactly how much because now you can spend money before you go on your trip on your onboard credit on and I used it to buy I think I bought internet I had already bought my short excursion but I bought the internet um, with the onboard credit and I wasn't totally sure and I saw the $25 it did not say the same thing the onboard credit says non-refundable um, onboard credit or something like that but Anyway, they did not deliver me a card or anything to let me know that it was a gift. And so I didn't know. And I like to recognize my people. If anybody send me something to give me anything, I like to say thank you and everything. And the, and the reason why I found out is because she sent me a message after she started watching my vlogs. I was like, hey, did you get my gift? And I'm like, girl, no. I don't, what you talking about? Anyway, and that's why I like to do my review after I have watched and edited all of my own videos so I can see stuff that I missed and things like that. But anyway, thank you, Claudette, for giving me that onboard credit. I am sorry that Carnival messed up again and didn't give me like a little card or anything. She said she even wrote something. Like, I don't know what they got going on, why they messing up. But, okay, on with the video. I wrote down things, y'all. Yeah, I do videos, and this is actually, I'm going to be honest with you. This is my second time doing this video. The first time, I tried to do it with the kids. They weren't cooperating correctly. I may try to add some clips of what they said in their little portion, but they did not want to film the video. They did not want to cooperate. Makeda cooperated more than CJ. CJ was going on about roller coasters. So, I'm doing this video over because if you guys are going on the, crew, on the Mardi Gras and you want more tips and stuff like that, I want to make sure that it's clear of what is what. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the cruise terminal. I've been out of Orlando before. Orlando, uh, well, Port Canaveral. Port Canaveral was the first cruise port that I've ever cruised out of. Um, when I cruise a long time ago on the Carnival Sensation. So I kind of don't totally remember what it looked like, but it definitely didn't look like what I just experienced. That cruise terminal is beautiful. It's brand new. I think they just like not too long built it. We went through the process super quick. Normally in the terminal, you're going to go through, they're going to check all your documentations, um, I know when we were in Miami, they checked all our documentations kind of almost at the door. Then they send you through security. Then from security, 
you gotta go stand at the desk and get your picture taken and this and that and blah 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 this cruise terminal got everything like literally you go through a line and i thought because it was so many people in line i'm like oh my god it's gonna take all day it probably took us maybe about 20 to 25 minutes and that's because we might have been standing in line for like 15 minutes it, it might have been shorter than that but it was it was quick so you go through the line um waiting and when you get to the first stop that you get to they are checking your documentations they are taking your picture right there like they doing everything and if you or one that did where you like me I do a credit card uh, for my onboard purchases if you did the credit card beforehand you didn't have to go nowhere else you just had to go through security and get on the ship so it was like boom 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 bye so they took your picture right there they did everything and then one person and then you went and they scanned your bags and take you know if you want to take a picture you go on whatever and then they didn't have it where you know like they might have like the backdrop that they pulled down they had all these big backdrops that was already there like made there everything was beautiful the chairs was beautiful i was like oh my god look at this cruise port it is beautiful this terminal is nice that's i wanted to say that because i was like yes that cruise terminal was everything um next thing i have on here the size of the ship if you've never been on a big cruise, like I've only cruised with Carnival and um, Scare Cruise, which is, uh, I, I can't even think, Bahamas, Bahamas, uh, Bahama Paradise, whatever the, the little cruise line that wish they could. Uh, but I've only cruised with them. And I've never been on... I, the biggest ship that I've been on is the Sunrise. That's the biggest ship I've been on, I think. Because I don't think the Valor is bigger than the Sunrise. This ship, if you've never been on any ships that they be, it is overwhelming when you get on there. Because you like, oh my God, this ship is huge. You need to be in shape. <laughs> you need to be in shape. This ship is huge okay that's all i can say about it is it's huge there's a lot of things on there there's so much stuff on there that it was stuff that i was discovering still on the last day i don't even know if i seen everything i did a walking tour like i walked and just vlog tried to vlog all the main areas and i'm trying to put that video together Hopefully I have it together by Friday because I need to do voiceover and stuff. I'm trying to put that video together so that you guys can see that uh how big and the nice areas that the ship had. The room, the room was nice. It was spacious. We had a balcony room. Um it was three of us if you haven't seen and it was very spacious. Now, the next thing that I have by there is bathroom side. That bathroom was tiny. When I tell you it was tiny, it was tiny. That was a small bathroom, okay? I I I see what they did. They took some of the bathroom sides off so that the room could be bigger. But girl, girl, that bathroom was small. It was a little bit more almost claustrophobic small. I mean, it did what it had to do. It worked, but it was small, and that was very noticeable. It was nice. It was beautiful. I like the fact that the bathroom, the shower door, you could open it, and it wasn't the curtain style. But, baby, it was small. That was a small bathroom. Um, Next thing I have on here is the food. Oh, my God. One thing I can say about this ship is you should never be hungry you should never, like, be like, oh, I, I, what am I going to eat? I want something different. There was something everywhere. So, the the selling that I went on, and I don't know if when you're watching this or, you know, in the future, if things change or whatever, but the selling that I went on is, is still in the inaugural season. So, the ship started selling, I think, in August of 2021. 
and I went March, April of 2022. And I think that inaugural season is for a year, not totally sure, but things that are supposed to be paid in the future or, and or as well pay on other ships are Cucina de Capitano for dinner, Chabane for dinner, and I'm trying to think. Oh, guys, Smokehouse Brew House um, as well. Those three things were free. So you had literally so much stuff to choose from. They had two things, that, three things that was our, that was still paid, no, four. So you had the Seafood Shack, which is always a pay option a la carte on every um, cruise ship. You had Rudy's Seafood Grill. You had the Steakhouse. You also had the, um, God, what is his name? Emeralds, the, uh, the, the New Orleans style food that was paid a la carte. Now we did try Emeralds. We actually just had beignets at Emeralds and that's all. And it was like $5, really cheap for like six of them. It was good. We also did go to Cucina for dinner. We went to Cucina for lunch. Um, we went to Chabane. That food was good. We went to Guy's Smokehouse Brew House. We did not like it. We did not like it. That food was not good. It was not my taste of barbecue. I am from Alabama, uh, from the South, and our barbecue was totally different than what I tasted there. So that was not my flavor. They did have Guy's Pig and Anchor. I have never tried Guy's Pig and Anchor, even though it's been on ships that I've been on. I've not tried it. My son tried it. He said it was good, but he did not like Guy's Smokehouse Brew House. So maybe it's somewhat different. Not sure. Um, you also had a main dining room, the buffet. You had this thing called Street Eats, which is three different styles where you can eat uh, different food. They have a fries one where they have different type of fries every day. They have a one that they have like Chinese like buns and um, almost like Chinese type of food. And then they also have like a, uh, what you call it? God, a place that had like skewers and stuff like that. We ate that all the time. They also have the um, uh, Blue Iguana Cantina. Um, I think it's Cantina. Blue Iguana Tacos, whatever. They had the tacos. They have a Guy's Burger. The Guy's Burger is huge. It's the biggest one I've ever seen on any ship. Um, they also have Big Shack Chicken. Big Shack Chicken was really good. Um, I did enjoy, I didn't enjoy the size, but I did enjoy the chicken. Uh, which to me, that's what matters is the chicken. <laughs> and I'm trying to think, is that it? Of course, they had ice cream. Uh, I think that might be, oh, they did have like the chef's table and these cooking classes. I didn't take part in the chef's table. I did not take part in the cooking classes. As a matter of fact, I tried to do the cooking classes, but they were so out so fast that I couldn't get on to doing a cooking class. Um, but overall, the food was amazing. The people in the main dining room, the staff was amazing. The staff always really amazing on Carnival, but they were really amazing. They noticed that I ate shrimp cocktail every single day. Like, every day that I was in the main dining room, I ate shrimp cocktail. And on the last day, the man brought me four sets, four things of shrimp cocktail. I couldn't eat, I ate three, but still. He brought me four things of shrimp cocktail, which to me, they're saying something. Because it's not like they just served my place for dinner. They serve early dining, late dining, and all of that. So, to me, that was good. And also, I want to talk about the dining time. The dining time, to me, was different on this one because my kids, they don't eat early. I can eat early. I'm fine with that. But my kids, they like, they got all of their traits, such as they, whether they're a morning person, night person, all that stuff, they got that from their daddy. I am a morning person. They like to sleep in, all of that. They like to eat late. They like to be up at night. So, I picked late dining. I always pick late dining because I could do any time, but they also like the fact that we have the same server when you do a set dining time and they 
you know your table, you had the same server, they know you, you know them, that type of thing. So we pick late dining. Late dining is normally at 8.15. On this ship, late dining was at 7.45. To me, that was a good time because there was in between times where really I kind of eat dinner, you know, whatever. So I was okay with 7.45 time. Um, I'm not sure what time early dining was. It might have been 5.15. To, if I had an early dining, I wouldn't have liked it. But the 7.45 time was great for me. I didn't have any problems. Some people have problems when it comes to any time dining because if you go time, it happens. It's crowded and sometimes you can't get a table. You have to wait to get a table on the app. But I didn't have a problem with it. Now, the app did have problems when I was trying to do um, the specialty restaurants. So, especially restaurants, if you want to go to them, and this is on this ship. I'm not sure if it's on every ship. What it said on the thing is that since I had late dining, I would have to, like, check in at that time of my dining time to go to the specialty restaurant. Well, the app didn't work. So, when you would try to check in, it would check you in. But it would say for other people, you can't check in until after 745. And it might have been after 7.45, 8 o'clock or whatever. So you had to go all the way there to be put on the list to wait. That was one of my issues. It wasn't too bad of an issue because we would just sit around and watch a show or something like that while we waited on our table to get ready. But it was an inconvenience because I could have been still in my room if I was able to hit the app and just wait on it like that. Now, I did want to talk about the entertainment. The entertainment on the Mardi Gras is amazing. So, I didn't actually go in the theater theater and see a show. I never made it there. Yeah, you need like two to three weeks on this ship to actually do everything. That's all I'm going to say. But I never went in this theater to do that. I didn't even go to the comedy club. I tried to and wanted to go to the piano bar. I never made it there. Um, but I did make it to the open, whatever it's called, center stage. I made it center stage. There was a band that was up there every day. It was three singers. And if anybody has watched any of my videos of those singers, they were, when I tell you, they were amazing. They were amazing. They knew, they could sing, they could hear every high note. They were theatrical. One of them, he was singing this Let's Go Crazy, and he was acting a fool i was like yes and then i missed getting this lady but she was singing i think it was tina turner song she was singing and she had on like this little outfit first and then next time i know that was ripping her outfit off and she had on this like uh almost like leotard shingle it down like yes lady yeah like when i tell you that uh the home band or whatever they were they were amazing they did their job and they did it well. I enjoy as well this uh, this girl who sung. She she would be in between the fortune teller bar and emeralds. They call it the French Quarter. She'll be in that little area. Um, if you have been on any carnival ship, you know they have like a certain area where they have a stage and like a band might play or a person might sing every night. They had several of those all around the ship. But she would be in that area because they would be on the way to dinner. And when I tell you, she was really good too. And I like the fact that the where that area was, it wasn't conflicting with any other like music. Like sometimes you might have them singing right here, but you might have some music coming from right there and it's like conflict. It wasn't. I was able to sit at Emeralds one day and just listen to her sing. Like she, I really really enjoyed her they also had like uh acrobatic stuff where they were doing aerialist things and swinging from the ceiling child that would that the entertainment on that shit was none other and then if you if you watch the video you know that i had two cruise directors because our first cruise director got laryngitis and had to sit out and then we got cookie i i enjoyed lee i liked lee lee was great 
I, I don't wish that Lee had gotten laryngitis, but it was by luck that he got laryngitis. And I'm telling you, it's by luck for real. Because, so, while we were on that ship, uh, this, this other one called Kendall Fire, she was supposed to be on there training. And then Cookie, he is actually on the breeze. But the breeze went to dry dock. And so while the breeze went to dry dock, they brought Cookie on that ship to train on that ship because that ship is different. And we are getting, and I'm saying we, because, you know, like I'm part of the carnival, like an uh, employee family or whatever. But we are getting two other XL class ships. And so somebody got to lead those ships or either be a backup or something. It's from what he said in his Q&A. But Cookie was coming on there to learn and that was his first day coming kendall was supposed to be on there and she was supposed to be learning and being a backup to lee kendall's flight got canceled or delayed or some whatever happened baby she got left in orlando she got left okay and cookie was on there and cookie was like yeah i wasn't even supposed to be i was supposed to be just in the background but I'm telling you, it was by luck. And I've been wanting to cruise with Cookie because I think that he's a really good cruise director. I've been wanting to cruise with Cookie, and I've been wanting to cruise with Dr. E. Those two right there, I've never cruised with Dr. E, but I've seen so many videos that I feel like I've cruised with Dr. E, and I want to cruise with him. And then as well, uh, I've cruised with, I've not cruised with Cookie before but i'm glad that i got that little taste because i was happy and then he is really really a good person when we were in that q a michaela asked him like what college did you go to and he started talking about his college and she was telling him that she wanted to be an actress and he gave her all this good great advice matter of fact he gave her advice in that but then he came back he saw us in the hallway and was like, hey, cousins, real cousins. Because I was like, we your real cousins. We from Alabama, too. And he saw us and he talked to us and gave us all this good, great advice about college and what maybe her next steps need to be. So I really, really, really enjoyed him. Like, he was, like, shout out to him. It's hot in my room. Are y'all going through the phase of spring where it's not... It's, it's, it's cold in the morning time and hot in the afternoon and you're adding on yet. Anyway, I'm going to hurry up this video so I can cut it down. But, I talked about the band. Oh, let me talk about the cruise ports. So, the cruise ports uh, we went to was San Juan. We went to Amber Cove, Dominican Republic. And we went to Grand Turks, Caicos. So, um, when we went uh, the the one that I enjoyed, I'll say the most, was uh, San Juan. I enjoyed San Juan the most because I felt like it was very walkable. I'm one that believes in the killer. So, I don't, like, when I go to new places, my guard is up. I, I'm scared to walk anywhere. I was not like, oh, 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 like that. I really was comfortable enough to me and the kids walk around. We found things. Like, it was, I, I just felt like, okay, San Juan, I like you. I'm here for you, San Juan. You here for me, I'm here for you. I could travel and stay in San Juan and feel like I would be, feel safe. Um, Not to say my guard wouldn't still be up, because I, I always believe in the killer. But, it's just that San Juan was just, I just felt so free to walk around and, you know, shop and do whatever I did. And then after that, Grand Turks, it was just so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was just so beautiful. I wish that I had brought some um, beach, some water shoes because uh, that was the rockiest beach ever. And then I did enjoy um, Mar Margaritaville and eating that food like and even the margarita was good like i enjoyed grand turk i did enjoy amber cole i enjoyed amber cole because we had an excursion if we hadn't had an excursion i don't think i would enjoy amber cole i the only thing i saw to do there was go to the pool and shop like i didn't i thought they had a beach i was ready to go to a beach but there was no beach 
So I didn't like it wasn't like that enjoyable for me. It was it it like the port wasn't that enjoyable for me. I didn't even buy as much stuff as like when I went to San Juan, I went crazy, you know, buying souvenirs. I even bought, you know, a few things at Grand Turk, but in Admiral Cole, just struggling. I was struggling to figure it out. And I did enjoy our excursion a whole lot. Uh, I was very, very, y'all might not see that in the video because I had, when I talk to myself and get myself made on, you gonna do this? I go ahead and do it wholeheartedly. But deep down inside, I was dying. Those monkeys, okay? Y'all don't understand. I have a fear of animals scratching my eyeballs out or clawing my eyeballs out. And I'm scared of monkeys, okay? But my child, Michaela, loves, when I tell you love, she loves animals so badly. And it's worse because she cannot have a pet because she's so allergic to just about everything um we just had her tested she did do the test when she was talking about the um test she did do the blood test we got her tested again she's not allergic to eggs like she thought she was but we did the blood test and she is a level four allergic to cats and she want a cat so bad but we can't get one anyway I was terrified of the monkeys, but I got it together. And I knew that they said, you cannot scream, you cannot flinch, you cannot do this. So I got it together, and I, I put my big girl panties on, and I got in there with the monkeys. I enjoyed the coffee demonstration and all of that. Now, and that's all that I need to talk about. Now, one thing I do want to have, a, a, um, I need to have a come to Jesus about, is the fact that I need a new phone. And I need a camera. I really do. Because if you notice towards the end, the vlogs were getting kind of shorter or the vlogs were getting kind of weird. It's because I vlog with my phone. And vlogging and what, like, I've been on four-day cruises, like, lots of four-day cruises. By the time I get to the fourth day, my storage is full. I got like the extra storage, but when you're on the boat, of course, you're not connected to your uh, your Wi-Fi or whatever you want to call it. You're not connected to the services so that it can go to the cloud because I got an iPhone. And my phone, like the storage would be full of everything. And so this time I tried to prepare it. I did deleted apps. I tried to delete messages that I didn't need. But by the time we got to day five, my phone was like, no, girl, no, you need, no, no, we've already talked about this. We've had this discussion, we've talked about this, and we said that we only doing this amount of days, so, no. And when I tell you, my phone was acting crazy. It will be sometimes that I'd be filming, and my phone would go completely blank, and it would be like a little spinning thing. It'd be sometimes I'm filming stuff like when Cookie jumped in the pool. I thought that I didn't get that because time I filmed that, my phone literally cut out and it started spinning. It's talking to me now saying that the low power. Anyway, so before I go on my next vacation, which is in June, I need to do some sort of situation with phone, camera, all of that. But that this this taught me. Girl, you go on, like, you can do a seven day, but you're going to have to do something else about this filming situation because your phone ain't it. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I've rambled on long enough. I hope y'all enjoyed this whole cruise vlog series. I hope you guys stay around, people who came for the cruise vlog. I am, I do do other stuff. I vlog my life, a lot of my life, and I do do other stuff. I am going on a land vacation in June for Juneteenth. It's a girl's trip. We are going to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I probably said that wrong. And I'm super excited about that. I just not too long got a passport, which I'm a little bit ashamed that I'm just getting a passport, but I got it. So that's going to be my first international trip uh, going like by plane. And I'm excited about that and very ready. 
and I will be vlogging it. My next cruise, if you want to know what my next cruise is, August the 11th on the Carnival Freedom. I'm going on groupcation. If you follow Edna's World, she's a vlogger, if you don't know. She has a groupcation trip every other year, and we're going on groupcation. So, stay tuned. We got a lot coming up, and we do have all the time go on different trips. We have family functions. We do a lot. But anyway... If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, y'all. I'm on the road to 1K. We're almost there. And just leave me a comment. Um, let me know anything that you want to know. I may go live this week. I'm thinking about going live on Friday. If I cannot get my video edited, uh, the the walking tour because it, this this walking tour is long and I got a lot of talking to do. But if I cannot get that video edited, I will go live on Friday to answer any questions that need to be answered. But again, y'all have a great day. Bye.